Okay. So um, today we'll be talking about effective communication. But before we move into it, let me share my slide. Okay, so hope you can all see my slides. All right, so effective communication. So let's just get started. So I have these questions like, would you rather be able to read people's mind perfectly or have the power to effortlessly persuade anyone with your communication skills? So which of the superpowers do you prefer? You can unmute. The second one, the second one. <laughs> so you prefer to be able to persuade someone. Okay, Sheila, go on. Yeah, persuasion. The persuasion, why? Why do you prefer persuading someone rather than to read people's mind? Because people sometimes think about really, they have really dark thoughts that I wouldn't want to be okay, a part so of. Okay, so you don't want to get involved in all of those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so um, Martin also said second one, both Bet Betel him, if I pronounce it well. So people prefer to have the power to effortlessly persuade someone with their communication skills. So let's move on to the second question here. So here we have, uh, would you rather send an important email with a couple minor typos or send a perfectly crafted email to the wrong person? Hello? The first one. Okay. So the first one. So in the previous um question, what we highlighted there is to have a good communication skill. And here we got to realize like it's okay to make mistakes, but what's important is the message is the, is being passed across. The second one, Sheila. So you prefer to craft a perfectly crafted email to the wrong person. Why? Please unmute and speak. Um, because I could always unsend, the, okay, not unsend, I could always apologize and okay. then I'll write the important email to the right person. Okay, right person. Send okay. the important email to, with a couple of the minor typos, they're not going to take me seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, so um, we all have different opinions. Some people prefer to send with minor typos why some prefer to send to the wrong person and then apologize and come back. So for the third question here, we have like, would you rather be known for your clear and concise writing or your engaging and persuasive speaking skills? So which one would prefer, your writing skills or your speaking skills? The second one, the speaking. Okay. So why do you choose the speaking over the writing? Writing is, is also very important. Okay, Grace said the writing. <laughs> so yeah, both writing and speaking, they are very important skills and all of them fall under communication skills. So here we have what communication is. So communication is, the act of um, transferring information from one person to another. It could be either through verbal, it could be non-verbal, and it could be writing. So from, from what we've seen before, we've seen like we have um, the maybe writing, the speaking, even sometimes it's not only about what you say, but how you say those things. But basically communication is the transfer of information from one person to another. It could either be verbal, 
it could be non-verbal or it could be written means. So everything we say have at least three messages. What we say, what we mean, and what the other person understood. So um, have you ever been in a situation where you have to, maybe after you've said something, then you have to later explain yourself, oh, I didn't mean it this way, this is what I meant. Have you ever been in such? Because I've been in a couple of those situations where you say something and person you are um, conversing with, you take it the other way around and you have to like explain yourself all over again. So have any other person find themselves in that type of situation? Hello? Should I start calling names? Yes, Sheila says she has. But is Sheila the only one here? Let me call another person. Mm. So, um, Gabriel, have you? <laughs> so, um, Gabriel, have you? You can unmute and answer. You, chat, you type it in the chat box. Jolly, are you there? Okay, so the question is, have you been in a situation where maybe you are talking with somebody and then the person takes the what you are saying the other way around? Then you now realize like this person is not understanding what you mean. You now have to go back and re-explain yourself. Like, oh, this is what I actually meant. I do not mean this and all of those things. Have you been in such situations before? All the time, severally. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, that's what we now say. Like, communication, there are three major things. Eh? We have what you say, what you meant, and what the other person understood from whatever it is you're saying. So, those are the three things that um, has to come along. Okay, you can't speak right now, but yes. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll now have to... Um, so, what we are going to look at today is how to how to say what we mean such that the other the person we are talking to or the people we are talking to they understand exactly what it is that we are saying and so they will not take our information or whatever we are saying the other way around so um there are different reasons why we communicate we communicate maybe to inform someone about something to request for something maybe to um persuade to ensure understanding <laughs> several other reasons there is for us to communicate. Um, Pascal, are you speaking? Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Then communication in the workplace. I say communication is the lifeblood of an organization because without effective communication, oh, it's all right. So without effective communication, there will be um, low productivity. Even like when you are running a team, if you cannot communicate among your team members, if you can, there are a lot of things like the um, the productivity of the workplace will be very low. The, the collaboration will not be effective. So for all of these reasons, we have to um, work on our communication skills. And as we know, poor communication can negatively impact productivity. It can impact um, collaboration efforts, our employee motivation, employee engagement, and every other thing in the workforce, in the workplace. So communication is actually very important. Now, we've talked about communication. We've seen um, how we've been in different situations where what we say is not exactly what the person understood. So what are the um, key things we should look at when we are communicating? How can we refine what we are saying such that the other person understands exactly what it is we are talking about? So that's where we come up with um, the seven C's of communication. So the first one is clear. When you are communicating with someone, communication is more than just talking. So it's getting the uh, message across. So and when you are communicating with somebody, you have to be clear. The message you are passing across has to be clear. 
before you um maybe pass on something you should ask yourself what is what is it exactly that you want the person to understand from this message so you have to be clear about the goal and purpose of what you're about to say so once you have that then the next thing is you have to be concise so you keep to the point and you keep your message short and simple, not being a talkative. And at the end of the day, just jumble every word together. So um, you have to be concise. And then when you are being concise, the other thing, there are different reasons why some people can be talkative in maybe, and depending on the situations. So it could be maybe they are nervous at the time or they, are, they don't even really understand what they are trying to say. So they just try to like beat about the bush. But once you are about to communicate, even maybe in the workplace or any other thing, you have to understand the goal of or the purpose of your message. Then you should try to be, um, you should pinpoint your message, try to be concise. Then the next one is concrete. The message you are passing across, it should be clear. You should provide the details, but not too much details. For example, if you are sending an email, maybe a reminder email to a colleague or maybe your team member about the meeting when the message should be concrete in the sense that what you are trying to pass across what the meeting is about when it's happening the time and and if you need the persons to give you um, a response after the email so all of those things should be included so so that the message you are trying to pass across will be clear as well then the next one is the information should be correct it should be facts that you're passing across, no lie, and it should be um, accurate and grammatically correct as well. Then your information, the message should be coherent and it should flow very well. This is very noticeable, especially in writing. If it's a written message, then it should be what's very coherent because it's very noticeable. When one paragraph, they are all, um, the paragraphs are just disjoint, they are disjointed. So also, it should be a complete um, information that should ensure that the recipient has everything they need to understand. And the next thing is you should be courteous about um, what you are saying, which is you should be polite, you should be friendly, and you should be professional and open about what um, you are saying. So um, the next thing is we have the framework of effective communication. So if you understood what we want to say, we are concise about it. So here is now how we will go about maybe communicating, especially this one is very useful, especially in the workplace. So the first thing is um, you should state, it should be the fact, you should state what happened objectively. So this one is just implementing the seven C's of um, communication. So for example, if you are working in a team, in a team and then you um, you want to pass a personal information to your team member you should state objectively what it is that you want to say for example it could be i noticed that so so and so thing has been happening for some time or you should state what it is that you want to address right from the onset then the feeling you should this is where being courteous come about you should be polite you should be um you should be aware of other other people's feeling as well so and as your own too then the next one is your expectation. So what are your, your met needs? For example, if you're working in a team and you have people, maybe someone is dragging on or not doing the tasks as is needed. So you, you your expectation, what is it you need from the person? You say, say it as well. Then you also um, pass across a concrete information, like what is it, the main action you want the person to take? What concrete action do you want the person to take that will help? For example, I would like if you could implement so so and so if you could do this. Then after all is said and done, you should also be um you should empathize with their need as well and be constructive as about how do they feel about this, what are their suggestions. And this is very important when you are working in a team where different people come together. So the next thing is we have different strategies to improve communication. So here are the strategies to improve communication. Like we pointed out in um, when we are talking about the seven C's, when we are talking about the seven C's, when we are talking about being concise here, we pointed out that sometimes you find yourself in situations where you just be a talkative. So here we talk about strategies on how to improve our communication. 
So the first thing is to learn how to manage stress. So you should recognize why you are becoming stressed or why you are being nervous in that situation. So that is what we address first before um, the come. For example, if you are asked to give maybe a public speaking um, speech, so you should recognize, okay, perhaps you have been nervous or you have been stressed. And once that is addressed, then you go on and speak and then you should try to remain calm even under pressure. And you should be willing to compromise and willing to uh, agree to disagree if necessary. Actually, this one is useful when you are working in a team as well. And then you should stop talking and listen because communication is more than just um, talking. So for it to for effective communication to take place, the person should also um, listen as well. Listening to is part of communication because it's not communication is not like a one street, a one way street. It's some is a two way street. So you should never talk, over talk, or interrupt people when they are talking, and then you should empathize, try to understand from the person's point of view, and be patient as well. So then, um, and then I'll leave you with this quote, which is, um, communication is only effective when we communicate in a way that is meaningful to the recipients and not just to ourselves, as said by Rich Simon. So yeah, that is what, effective communication is about. But before we move on to the challenge, do you have any questions or any suggestions? Hello, any questions? So we can move on to the challenge document. All right, then. So yeah, to so the challenge document. So the deadline for this is on Saturday. And this is the background. So um you have been hired to coordinate a team of five members that are currently working on the alpha projects because their team lead recently resigned so the team has been working on the projects for four weeks and despite being composed of highly skilled professionals they are significantly behind schedule they have only two weeks to deadline so and you're on, on the second day of your employment you realize that the team has some issues that have been that have been impacting them negatively. So the first thing, and these are the things you um, came to realize, the first thing is that the team, they began to work without well-defined understanding of the project's mm -hmm. goal and its strategic plan. So this has led to inefficiencies as team members engage in tasks without clear direction or understanding of the overall project. Then the next one is that team members have not been assigned the roles that best fit their skill sets, leading to inefficiencies and frustrations. So the third thing you notice is that the team members, they do not regularly communicate their progress or their challenges or their needs. So this leaves some of the team members isolated when they encounter difficulties, they don't know who to meet. Then the next one is, although team members, they are individually capable, they tend to work alone. They do and this isolation not only slows down the individual tasks, but also prevents the team from leveraging collective knowledge to overcome complex challenges. <laughs> so, the so the fifth um, um, this thing you notice is that two of the team members happen to be chronic latecomers. They they resume work late. They are always late to scheduled meetings too. And this attitude has some drawbacks on the overall team. So, the, so those are some of the things you notice on your second day of resumption, like, and you are the team lead of this alpha project. So yeah, these are the tasks you have to do. So you describe four steps you will take to ensure that all team members understand the project's goals and their individual responsibilities. Then the second thing is what three ways would you ensure that each, each member, each team member is assigned a role that fits their skills? 
how are you going to go about ensuring that each of the team members are assigned a role that fits their skills? And then the next one is describe three strategies you would implement to improve communication among your team members. Then propose three methods to foster collaborative attitude among team members. And then the last one is that using the framework of effective communication that we talked about in this slide, you should apply how you would make your concern known to the two latecomers in the team. So that is um, what the challenge is about. And this submission should be a PowerPoint presentation with seven slides, and they should detail your answers to. So should I go over the challenge again? Or do you understand what you are expected to do? Okay, I should go again. Okay. So here, I'll try to explain without like reading the document. So here you have been like you, you are working with the team, you are just employed. So the team they've been working on one project, Alpha project, and before their team lead resigned. Mm -hmm. So now you are appointed as a new team lead to that. Okay, um, my internet went out, but you all get what I said.
Hello. Hi, Mariam. Uh, we can hear you now. Hello. You can go through it again. Don't mind. Okay. Okay. So let me go through it one more time. Okay, so the um, the background is that you are the team lead of five um, members, team members. They've been working on the Alpha project for four weeks before their previous team lead resigned. So now you, you are just joining the team and you are just joining them to work on this project and you are their team lead. And this, um, they've been working on it for four weeks and they have two weeks left to the deadline. But on your second day of employment, you realize that the team has some issues that is impacting their performance negatively. So the first thing you noticed is that the team, they began to work of their project goals and strategic plan. So, and this has led to some inefficiencies of the team members. And the other thing you notice is that team members, they've not been assigned goals that best fit their skill sets. And this has led to inefficiencies and frustrations. Then the third thing is that the team members do not regularly communicate their progress, their challenges, or their needs. And this leaves some of the team members isolated when they encounter difficulties. Then although each of these um, team members, they are individually capable, they know their stuff, but they tend to work alone and they do not share insights. And this has also impacted the project negatively. Then the fifth thing is that the um, two of Mario, the team members, yeah. Sorry, uh, not sure we can see your screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, we can. Okay, um, should I just continue or I should start from the beginning? You can really continue from where you were. Okay, um, so the fifth thing is that two of those five um, members, two of them are chronic late commons and they resume work late. They are always late to scheduled meetings. So if you use, and this attitude has also like draw back the overall team. Then your tax here, the first thing is I should describe four steps you take to ensure that all team members understand the project's goals and their individual responsibilities. Then the second thing is you should describe three ways. Um, like what three ways would you ensure that team members assign a goal that fits their skills? And also three strategies that you will implement to improve communication among your team members. I should put to positive attitude among these team members. What are some of those things you put in place to foster co um, collaborative attitude among these team members? And then using the framework of effective communication that we talked about, then you should outline how you show your concern to the two late comers in the team. So yeah, that is what is required. And once you are done with that, you prepare a PowerPoint presentation of about seven slides with your detailed answers, and that's what you submit. So yes, this is the um, rubrics for marking. So you, so do you understand the challenge and how I should provide to this? Okay, Martin. I wanted to ask, is this group work or is it individual? Okay, it's individual. You get that, Martin. Okay. So it's to be done individually. Yeah, uh, Martin, to clarify, can, can I ask why you thought it was a group assignment? Just to ensure we didn't miscommunicate no, anything. Because, uh, okay. because, uh, because we're doing like group, the whole group thing for 
a week three challenge. So I thought everything in general was going to be group, I think everything in the group, those groups. That's what I thought. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. No, it's an individual work. Technical challenges, instructions are completely different with the non-technical ones. Okay. Um, over to you back again, Mariam. Okay. Yeah, um, so is there any other questions? So we all understand what um, the challenge is about and what is expected of us. Okay. All right, so yeah, that is all. Let me stop recording. And yes, you can 